Chapter 17. Oh no, this definitely isn't good. I look from Philip back to Kate. Isaac, what is this about? Kate questions me, scared. Why are you with the killer? She takes a step back from us. Kate, I can explain. I start. The entity, it, and just like that, she disappears. Kate runs off into the forest without stopping to listen. Great. I sigh and turn to Philip. It would probably be better if you choose to stay as a killer, Philip says to me. I doubt that the wife will trust you anymore at the way she is going to tell them. Here, follow me. We got some new people. He starts leading me back to the campfire. Well, one of them isn't really a person, to say the least. He is cut off by a loud roaring sound that gets knocked to the ground by a large creature. Ow. The creature stands over me on all fours, its hands on my chest, weighing me down. I look up to see a large humanoid figure. It has gray toed skin, with sunken chest, showing off its ribs and collarbone. Covering the body of the creature is a shiny slime, along with chains over its body, connected to its two shackles on its arms and, its, and neck. The creature doesn't have a face, but a strange petal like mouth. It growls and opens the petals. Revealing wells of sharp teeth and spikes. Jewel drips over m onto my chest as it nears my face. No, bad boy. They're not food. A female voice calls out and quick footsteps approach me. Someone tugs on the chains around the creature's neck and it backs off of me, sitting on the ground nearby. Susie bends over me, me mask off her face and concern written all over her face. Are you okay? She holds out her hand to help me out. Up. I think so, I answer, taking her hand and standing, dusting myself off. What was that thing? I look over at the creature. Oh, him? He's called the Demogorgon, or something like that. Joey said, Joey said, Joey said he heard it from a new survivor, Susie, ex Susie explained. He's nice, he just doesn't know you. She smiles. Uh huh. I nod tried to take all this information in. Oh, right. He's not the only addition to our killer team. There are two more guys. They're a team, like our legion. Their, name, their names are Billy and Stitt. They dress up as this guy named Ghostface and kill people. Susie keeps going on. Man, she really likes talking. Although they don't really like our team, they think we stole their idea or something. A small brown car a small frown crosses her face. Anyway, she speaks again. Let's head back to the lodge. Frank wants to talk to you. Oh, damn it, that was Susie's voice. Susie grabs my hand, in her, and in her other hand is a chain connected to the Demogorgon. She leads me towards the campfire. I see the plague standing near the fire. As soon as Susie and I enter the clearing, she looks up and something flickers in her eyes. She walks over to me. The human part of her face seeming like she's deep in thought. Susie backs away from her, probably either intimidated or scared of the play. Adir is. The tall, head dressed daughter woman points towards herself. Adir is. She's saying her name. She then points to me. Is she trying to get my name? Isaac, I tell her. It's Isaac. Isaac? She asks. A small smile creeping onto her face. She says something in her language and then holds out her left hand, wanting to shake hands. A quick glance at her hand makes me not want to shake it. Upon her fingers are sharp metal claws, as well as her hand has blisters and diseased skin. Hesitantly, I shake her hand. The smile drops to a frown once her chest glows again. She muttered something before disappearing into another trial. I wipe my hand off on my pants. Hope I don't get sick from shaking her hand. What was that about? Susie asked me, raising an eyebrow. She was introducing herself to me. I was just in a trial with her. I turned to look at Susie. Her name is Adiras. Susie looks a bit surprised. You understood her language? I chuckle. No. But she was saying that while pointing to herself. So, I assume that's your name. Susie nods. That makes sense. 
Anyways, Frank isn't very patient. We should go see him now. Susie leads me back to the snowy lodge, bringing the demogorgon along. So, is that your thing? Is that thing your pet now? I asked Susie, a little creeped out by the fact that she's been able to keep it under control. Yep, she nods, smiling. I can even ride him, but he doesn't like it that much. She hums happily. Too bad I can't bring him into other trials with me. That would be fun. She looks up, off into the distance, probably daydreaming about what would happen if she brought the devil go get into a trial with her. Frank is waiting outside the door to the lodge, examining his knife. He looks up when he hears the crunch of snow from our footsteps. There you are. What took you so long to get here? I was in a trial, I explained. And then Susie Pet tried eating me. That was fun. Frank chuckled, putting his knife away. Yeah, he tried eating me too, Frank said. I'm surprised that Faye even listens to her. Yeah, so what did you need me for? I asked him. Well, he starts. You haven't been getting a lot of killer action, so I heard. I suggest you ask Mr. Entity to let you go to a trial as a killer again. Oh, great. Chapter 18 I scanned Frank's face for a moment, wondering if he was joking. Nope, definitely wasn't. Entity is gonna let you keep hanging with us if you keep being in survivor's trials, Frank explained. And that would mean that you wouldn't be part of us anymore. I nod, listening. Of course they would vote me as a member if I became stuck as a survivor. I thought about it, unsure. They were my friends, but so were Lori and the other survivors. One trial is a killer who shouldn't hurt too bad. Right? I'll do it. I look at Frank. I'll do it. I look at Frank. Just give me a moment. I want to go ask the other killers for advice in trials. Frank chuckled. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. He waved me off. Come back when you're done. I nod and head back down the trail towards the killer, killer's campfire. Surprisingly, the fire is crowded. It looks like all of the other killers are there, save for one or two who might be in the trial. They were all circled around two people. Probably the two new guys, Billy and Stu. Only a few strayed from the group, Anna, the Huntress someone else. A tall man dressed in dark blue with a white mask over his head. He stared at me. He seemed a bit intimidating, so I decided to go talk with the huntress. She smiled as I approached her, hiding the spot on the log next to her. I sit and I sit down and look up at the tall woman. Hi Anna, I speak. Vivier Isaac. She's I'm trying to do a female Russian accent. She said something in Russian. Probably a greeting. How are you? Okay, I'm starting to start get a little basis. Um, I'm trying my best to do a Russian accent. I don't know, I hum, looking into the fire. The entity keeps switching me between being a survivor and a killer. It's really confusing. That's East Strange, she hums. I hope the entity can decide. Hopefully he will be he be, he be stuck. Whatever that word is, like us, Anna smiles. Yeah, actually, I was wondering if you could give me advice about killing survivors, I ask her. Advice? Of course. She stands. Hit. Oh my gosh, I have to read. Oh my gosh, I can't read Russian. I raise an eyebrow at her, confused. Follow me. She holds a hand out to help me up from sitting on the log. I stand and she leads me down the path that leads the killer to the map. The scenery changes and we come across a cabin. One from the very first trial I was in. This is my home. We left Naya. Anna explains, gesturing around the cabin. It definitely was bigger than it looked to be in the trial. The entity probably makes it small for the child to speed him up. You want to learn, da? She looks at me. I teach you. I, I nod. That would be nice. Anna smiles. Inside lockers and jars are hatchets. She opens a locker. There just so happened to be one inside the cabin. Or had it just appeared there? Can the killers control the maps? And just like she says, 
we had it so neatly lined up. You take these and throw them at my eyes. She picks one up and hands it to me. Follow. She leads me outside, lead me over to a tree. Using a hatchet she had grabbed for herself, she makes a marking in the tree. Now, pretend the tree is a survivor. Throw the top we at them. The hatchet. I step away from the tree, rolling my arm back to throw the hatchet. I toss it and completely miss the tree. Anna laughs. Your buster is bad. Watch. She, she throws her own hatchet at the tree, hitting the center of the X marking she had made. She grins. That is how you throw hatchet. This quad. Does that even sound like a Russian accent? Because I, I want it to sound Russian. And I just hope this doesn't sound, it does, this doesn't sound racist. I retrieved the hatchet I had thrown and returned to the spot I was standing in. Anna stands behind me and helped me stand correctly to throw the hatchet. Now, in that tree. This time, I aimed it. I hit the tree. I missed the Mikey Anna had made, but I definitely hit the tree. Better. Anna grins. What is Naya Bobat You should go you should go back to Legion. Practice more. I nod. Thank you for showing me how to throw the hatchet. I smile at her. Oh Haliusta. Tall woman hugs me. It was a friendly hug. Maybe dancing at the border of, of motherly. She sees me off as I head back to the campfire. Some of the kills are still interested in ghost space, but it seems that the initial craze is over. A tall, muscular figure stops me into my path, moving to stand in front of me. I stop walking and look up. Right in front of me is a tall man with a strange mask on. Sticking out of his, his shoulder is a metal rod, one resembling the sacrificial hooks that you can find in trials. He wears brown overalls that are also held to his skin by metal hooks. He gives off a very intimidating aura. The man stares at me, scanning me with his eyes. Oh, Evan, Bill steps in. It's surprising to see you out by the fire again. This is Isaac. One of our newer recruits. Isaac, this is Evan McMillan. The survivor called him the Trapper. He's our leader, as he was here before the rest of us. We've had a lot of new recruits, Evan grunts. His, his voice deep and gruff. The entity had been busy. Okay, that really talked like that with my phone. Hopefully, Evan doesn't have to talk more. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that hit my throat. <sighs> anyway, Philip nods. Isaac is, be Isaac is better than the other one, so they're able to visit the survivor's campfire and go into trials as a survivor. Evan's demeanor changes slightly. A puzzled look comes across the part of his face that I can see. So they are also a survivor. That is strange, Evan frowns. Why do you go into survivor trials? He looks at me. Well, it's not really my choice. Oh, <coughs> okay, I think I just stopped talking like that when Evan talked because, yeah, that actually hurts my throat. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, sorry. The entity just keeps switching me back and forth. It's confusing. Evan nods, listening to me speak. Before he can say anything else, another kill comes over and distracts him. It's a short, deformed lady. Her skin looks like it's made out of twigs and mud. One of my hands is disproportionately large, replaced with a claw. Hey, Evan, someone set off one of my traps nearby. It's a survivor. They probably just wandered off too far into the forest looking for stuff. Lisa, Evan sighs. If I have to get, I'll send someone to go scare them off. It just happened again. The lady, Lisa, as Evan calls her, speaks. Evan rolls his eyes. Alright, Isaac, go with Lisa to go see the survivor that's setting off the track. Evan waves us off. Lisa starts on, on her way into the forest, to be following closely behind. So you're the one in, so you're one of the new people everyone had been talking about, she asked, her voice croaking. 
He sounds like someone who hadn't drank water in months. Yeah, I'm Isaac. If he didn't already guess from Evan saying it, I explained. And you're Lisa? She nods. Yeah, but the survivors call me the hag. I don't know where they got him from. That's a rude thing to say to someone. I nod, smiling slightly. Yeah, call me someone a hag is rude. I agree. But what are these traps I put about? I asked. I already knew what they were, of course, thanks to May. But for the sake of keeping the conversation going, I asked her. I draw a symbol at the ground, and when the survivor walks near it, a fake virgin of me pops out of the ground. It scares them, and I can teleport to the fake and attack them. Lisa croaks. Lisa croaks. I put some around the perimeter at the campfire to keep the survivors away. We reach the spot where she had set the trap. See? There are footprints leading away from this. So it worked, she explains. You followed those to see what the survivors went okay. I need to put these traps back up. I decide to listen to her and follow the footprints curiously. They lead into the forest. Chapter 19 Into the woods the footprints go. I carefully take my knife out of my pocket and grip it in my left hand, following the trail. These are definitely from a survivor. I don't think there's any killers with small feet other than Lisa. It seems as if the trail goes on for forever. A light shines in the distance. I must be getting closer to the campfire. Something stopped me in my tracks. A shiver goes down my spine. I'm being watched. I look around, holding the knife out as an attempt at the fence. Nearby, a shadow moves. Footsteps sound from another direction. I look around frantically. A bit scared. Something grabbed me by my shoulder from behind and I freeze. Boom! A deep, creepy voice speaks. I, I yelp and jump away, trying to face whatever it was that scared me. Laughing sounded. The perpetrator, a person dressed in black robe and a ghost mask, was nearly on the ground, hitting it with the fist and wheezing. You should have seen the look on your face, they explained between laughs. You look like you nearly pissed yourself. As I should have expected, Ghost face. I heard more footsteps behind me as I turned to see another person in the same costume. Man, man, you should have got a good stew. The new person spoke, chuckling to himself. Right, Stu and Billy. Billy took off his mask, pulling out a hand toward me. Nice to meet you. I'm Billy Loomis, and my friend there is Stu Macher. The Macher and Macher. I glanced down at his gloved hand and hesitantly shake it. What are you guys doing all the way out here near the survivor's campfire? I question. We could ask you the same. Stu gets up from the ground, also taking off his mask. You're all the way out here too. We followed you from the outer camp. Sorry, pausing. We followed you from the outer campfire. He seems interesting. Billy answers. We almost thought you were a survivor. Oh, I say, nodding. I can see how you can confuse me for survivor. I'm pretty normal looking compared to the other killers. Lie. Billy and Stu look like they could also pass as survivors. And I already know the other Legion made members who has a tactic to learn survivors. Anyways, I'm doing something for Evan, the trapper. You see, I was following these footprints and look out to see the footprints, but they're gone. I look around, trying to see what happened, but there's no sign of the footprints anywhere. Then it happens. Pain shoots from my chest and a red light shows through my skin. Another trial. I hope it doesn't put me into survivor position. My vision goes black and I hold my arm out, grabbing at the air. But my hand grabs onto something hard. Mask. So I'm the killer again. I fastened the mask up to my face and closed my eyes, raising myself for the trial. Upon opening my eyes again, I find myself in an oriental looking area. In the distance sits a large broken house that seems like the Japanese architectural style. Clusters of bamboo come out of the muddy brown ground here and there, creating what seems like a gold, a good hiding spot for survivors. The trademark wall with walls also littered the area. For more wooden look. I, tr 
straight towards the house, examining it. This must be Rid's map, if I can remember correctly. She's Japanese. I can't really think of anyone else that would have this place. The house is overgrown with vines. The tatami doors containing holes from wear and tear, along with the, ha the hard vines poking through. Foot footsteps sound from inside. A survivor. The footsteps are moving away from me quickly. Of course they are. I heard the killer's, tip the killer's radius so they can tell when I'm around. I start to have second thoughts. Should I really be doing this? Survivors are my friends too. I follow whoever it was, crouching behind my radius, like a man that taught me. It sounds like the killer left. A voice sounds from inside the building. It sounds like one of the male survivors. Were you able to see who it was? I listened to the voice and carefully opened one of the tatami doors. It opened slowly as I fight for it to get it open, trying my hardest not to make noise. No, I did it. Another voice answers, a feminine voice I haven't heard before. Damn, guess we'll have to find out later. The first voice replies, I can't seem to pin the voices on any two people. My footsteps are silent as I carefully shuffle into the building. The voices, are just, the voices are just on the other side of the thin tatami wall. I peek through one of the holes in the paper. Wouldn't it be better to find out soon? The second person asked. It's someone new. A, new. a girl with shoulder length blonde hair. The pink goggles on her head shone slowly in the candlelight. The wood, the first person sighed. But we need to get this generator started. It's Detective Tap. He and the new girl were standing next to an unrepaired generator. The generator made a low, quiet hum that was barely audible. But once Tap crouched down and pushed a few buttons, it came to life. One of the pistons started moving very slowly, and the generator made it almost coughing sounds as it started up. I'm gonna be coughing a lot since. Cut. I do a lot of voices and it's hurting my throat. One. Anyway, the girl crouched back to him on the side of the generator. So, what am I supposed to do? She questioned, looking at the generator with an unsure look. I assume it's just about attaching wires and faking stuff if that's out of place. That's exactly what it's about, Tap explains. It's quite easy once you get used to it. Go ahead and give it a try. I, did, I didn't stay to see if she made any progress. I kept close to the ground and crawled over to a locker, remembering what Anna had taught me. I reached into it and grabbed two hatchets. The door creaked. The next room went silent. What was, what was that? The girl asked. Probably just another one of my friends. Stay here and look at the generator. I'm going to go check it out. I hear Tab say the footsteps approach me. Quickly crouching around the corner, I hear Tab open the locker. Strange. Tap pumps. Hello? Anyone there? I should attack him. I should. The body won't move though. Closing my eyes, I think for a moment. Should I do this? I've already killed other survivors before. But I'm beginning to doubt that I can. The dark whispers appear again. Their voices are loud. My eyes shoot open and my body moves on its own. I watch as I stand and ready to hatch it. Tap looks at me, eyes wide. I'm not worried about him seeing my face, as I had the mask on. I'm more worried about what's going to happen. A scream sounds, blood flies through the air, and somehow, I know that it was me controlling my body to do it. 